Keep it down. Okay, so we're gonna get this picture. Shh. We're gonna get this picture uh, of the ogre. Today our goal is to get this guy to look like he's walking. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of all my shape stuff. Don't need it. And I'm going to make a sprite. I'll call it Ogre, I guess. I make a texture, because that's going to load the picture of the Ogre into my code. I'll call it Ogre T, or Ogre Texture. Smart name. I will say Ogre Texture, because that's the one I have to load in from file. It's looking for a file name. Safe to run it now just to see if it actually opened the file or not. Okay. I didn't get any weird error messages, so I know it opened that file. And I'm just going to draw it. Okay. So what I have to do is I have the texture. I have it loaded into the memory. Now I just need to kind of attach it to my sprite. So I write ogre.setTexture. Every sprite requires a texture. Textures are separate from sprites just because there's a lot of memory involved in like storing a picture on your computer. Okay. Ogre texture. And then I could just draw the ogre and the problem you'll see here in a second is that it draws all 16 of them. But I only want to draw one of them. Okay. So there you go. It drew, drew all 16. You can see there's some there's some white space here. I'm not I forgot to delete out of there. Maybe I'll make my background white so that I don't have that issue. That's looking good. There we go. Okay. What I'm going to do for now, guys, is I'm just going to grab this first ogre. Now I could go into my images and actually just crop that out, but I'm going to be I'm going to use SFML to do it. Yeah. Well, then I'm guessing you didn't do the same thing I did. Hold on. Oh, I can't, I can't stop my recording. Okay, guys, so uh, there is a command for sprites called set texture rectangle. Look at this. Let's read about it. The texture rect is useful when you don't want to display the whole texture, but rather a part of it. By default, the texture rect covers the entire texture. Makes sense. So here we could set a sub rectangle of the texture we want to display. So what we, we want to do is actually grab, if I'm thinking about it, I just want to grab this guy right here. Yes? Okay. So to grab that guy right there, I just need the coordinates. Uh, this is obviously going to be 0, 0 for the image, so I know the top left corner. And then I need to know how wide this square is and how tall it is. So we'll do a little bit of math to figure that out. Um, so what I'm going to do is set texture rect, and if you look inside, it requires this thing called an int rec. That stands for a rectangle made of integers. So int rect, if I type it, I just pass in brackets four numbers. Now it always takes, uh, it always goes top x, top y, width, and height. Those are the four numbers I need to enter into these brackets. Okay. 
So if I think about my image, the top left and top, uh, the top X and top Y value are just zero, zero. I just need the top left corner of my picture. But I need to know how wide each ogre is and how tall each ogre is. That shouldn't be a problem because I know the size of my image. If you look way down here, you can see the image is 430 pixels wide and about 580 tall. Okay. So I'm just going to go 430. For the width of my ogre, I'm just going to go 430 divided by 4 because there's four of them on there. And the width of that rectangle is 107.5 pixels. So I'm going to write 107.5 here for the width. And the uh, height of my ogre is 580. I'll pick 580 even though it's 579. Close enough. I know. I'm going to divide that by 4. And so the height of that ogre is 145. And now, uh, if I run that, it should only show the top left ogre. Okay, there you go. Good. Okay. So I got just one ogre here, but um, what if I could put this value what if I could put this command inside my while loop but constantly be changing this number? What I really want to do is I want to go from here to here to here. I want to go from this ogre. And then a few frames later, I want to go to this ogre and so on and so forth. And then the next few frames, I want to go to this ogre. Okay. And then after that, I want to go to this ogre. So I want to just go back and forth between those four pictures. So I'm going to have to do that in my while loop. I'm going to have to set that command in my while loop. Okay, this command here. But I need to make one of these numbers a variable. I'm just going to put it here. Okay. And um, I need to make for that, for the top ogre, I actually need to make this number a variable. It could either be zero, like it is right now. I know each ogre is 107.5 wide, so it could also be 107.5. And now it's gonna choose this ogre, okay? You'll notice his foot will be back when I run it now. Uh, it's the top Y. Yeah. So I'm just staying in the top row. Okay. So notice his foot is back there. Okay. If I want to grab um, this over, this third one, okay, I'm just going to go 107.5 times 2. So I could say times 2 here. Right? Okay. So now it's going to grab the third ogre. And it looks like his foot is forward again. That's the third ogre. He hasn't really changed from the first ogre. But now I'm going to pick the fourth ogre by timesing this by three. I'm just sliding the picture over. But if I could make this a variable, that switches from zero to one to two to three, I can make this guy go bonkers and animate really fast. Did it work? Okay. Let me try it. Now his other foot should be back. Okay, run it. Okay, so there we go. 
So basically, I need this to be a variable. And I'm just going to make a variable, like an integer variable here. Int, uh, I don't know what I'll call it. I'll call it f for frame. Let's set it to 0. Okay. And then here, I'm going to put times f. And then all I need to do is get f to go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. So why don't maybe just right at the beginning of my while loop, I'll just write f++. plus plus. I'm not going to do anything in this event while loop stuff. That, that's for another day. Okay. So maybe I'll put it right before I put his texture there. Yes, Omar? This one like 14. Sorry, 15, right? Yeah. Not 14. Not 14. OK. So. What's going to happen is, let me see out F as well. He's going to animate really, really quickly for like a millisecond, but then F is going to get past four, five, six, seven, and it's not going to draw him anymore. You'll see him animate super, super, like, you'll see him just animate instantly for like a second or two, and then, then it's gone, okay? Because F uh, went from zero to one to two to three, but then, the problem is, um, once it goes to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever, it's like it's trying to grab a rectangle that's off this picture. Okay, so I need to go from zero to one to two to three, and then back to zero to one to two to three, and then back from zero to one to two to three, so on and so forth. Uh, the way to get a number to count only from uh, to only to three is to percent it to by four. You divide it by 4 and you check the remainder. The remainder of any number divided by 4 is always between 0, 1, 2, and 3. So watch when I run this. So if we needed to grab 7 pictures, would we percent it percent. by 8? Percent. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. We just percent the amount of pictures. Yes, you do. Yeah. Okay, so if I run this now. Oh, uh, here's one issue. And I put this in brackets, maybe? It doesn't like, uh, because because it does bed mass, it does 107.5 times F, which is a decimal, right? And then it tries to take the percentage of a decimal, and it doesn't like that. So I'm just going to put a little bracket around here so I know to do that integer stuff first. And you'll see him just animate super, super fast. And you'll also see the F go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's really he's he's animating 60 times a second right that's way too fast for us so if we want to slow that down all we have to do is slow down this f so um instead of saying f percent four maybe we go f percent f divided by two so we make it twice as slow okay because now f's only going to count up uh one every two frames Point, we're just math. Yeah, it's all math. Coding is math. Everything's math. Everything's math. Yeah, you're starting to learn that. Okay, so now he's animating twice as slow. It still looks like he's going a little too bonkers for me. So why don't I do 10? Yeah, I'll do 10 times as slow. So every six frames instead of 60 frames, he's going to animate once. Didn't he look mean? Okay. Yesterday we talked about how to get him to move up, down, left, or right. So I'm going to move him down a little bit. Maybe just without a keyboard command for now. I'm going to go ogre.move. Zero comma, I don't know, four pixels. Now he's going to look like he's coming at, uh, down towards somebody. Give him a beating. It kind of looks like he's sliding a little bit. Maybe a little too fast for what he's animating. <coughs> so basically, we're just pulling little squares out of that image, but we're timing it so that it looks like the guy's moving. Pretty neat, eh? 
Um, okay, that's good. Uh, what about if we want him to go sideways? We don't have to actually change much. We just have to go down one row, keep all our numbers the same. Let's try this briefly without getting him to move. So I'm going to get rid of my move command, but I want to use all these four pitchers instead of the top four. Okay. Um, okay, so I get rid of my move command. The only thing I have to change is this. Because this is the width of each pitcher. This is the height of each pitcher. Those will always be the same. This is going to be the code that makes it skip from the first to the second to the third to the fourth pitcher. And this number here represents like where to start on the y axis. I picked a zero here to start at the top of the pitcher. But if I just go down, however tall each pitcher is, what did we say how tall they are? Every pitcher is 145. So if I type 145 here, it will pick the second row of ogres to draw. If I type uh, 145 times 2, that will be the third row of overs. You could just figure out it's 290, but. Okay. And if I do um, 143 times 4, 145 times 3, sorry. He'll look like he's facing away from the screen. Cool. Um, okay, so let's just add a little bit of keyboard into there then instead. So um, if you can just start writing the word keyboard and it'll tell you if you spelled it wrong or you have the lowercase wrong. If I hit enter here, it will pick the one I want. Hit colon, colon, there's all the keyboard keys and one function you can use. The function is green, all the keyboard keys are yellow. That one function, actually there's two, but uh, that one function is called is key pressed. Click on that. And if you noticed when I did that, inside the brackets it told me it was looking for a something called a keyboard key. So I just write keyboard, colon, colon, and pick a key. I'm gonna press it down. Hit enter, so, and I notice I'm missing a bracket here, so close that. And in here, I'm gonna put my ogre set texture command. There. Okay. Yep. And I'll pick uh, times zero. And now when I press the down arrow, he'll look like he's moving down. Cool. Uh, and I could also move him down now. So he's moving with the keyboard, but I actually want to move him down as well. So I'm going to write in inside of this if statement, ogre dot move zero comma two. Hiccupy, and I'll and we'll get rid of that in a second. But I'm just going to copy all this code, and um, I'll get him to move uh, up when he moves up. So the command, the keyboard command for that is colon colon up, and, and this should be instead of times zero, this should be times three, and this should be minus two to move him up. Okay, now when I move up, switches over. 
What? Bro can make him turn. Um, I said when the keyboard is pressing up, I, I change his animation, but I just picked the fourth row instead of the first row. Okay. Paste this now and say if he's moving right, I got to find out which row he's moving right in. It is the third row. So I write times two here, and I move him to the right. You can see how you can make uh, games pretty quickly doing this kind of stuff. Okay. Last one is left. And this should be times one. Yo. CBP, Code Box Project, it stands for. Okay. Yep. So that's good for now. I'll show you some cool extra things we can do later, maybe. One thing I might add is just a background in here. But he walks around and he animates, so it looks really neat. Okay, and basically the program's just pulling pictures out of that texture constantly whenever we tell it to. So I'm just gonna go quickly online and get a cool background, like a, I don't know. What do you search for cool background? 800 by 600 background. Yeah. I want something like a forest or something. Is this ogre? That's where he's hunting. You want an animated forest? Do that. Yeah, okay, hold on. Images. This is. Yes, yes. Actually, though, because he's going to be walking, he'll look like he's floating on that one. So maybe that's not that good. I'm going to say top down. Aha! Uh -huh. There's uh, an old Zelda one. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So I'm going to save that into my project. I am on animation. Now, this is a terrible name for a file. It's called PNG Large. I've never heard of that. PNG. This could be okay. Give it a smart name like BG, okay, for background. Yeah. Can you make like the, the photo get smaller? Like let's say, like yeah, you could. That yeah, you can use views. There, yeah. yeah. There's something called a view where you can like zoom your window in and out and stuff. So I'm just gonna make a sprite quickly called background. I'm gonna make a texture called BG texture. You could figure this out on your own if you want, but it'll make mine look good. I'm gonna go load from file. I called mine bg.jpg. So I'm smart and I don't wanna deal with crazy names. And then I'm gonna draw the texture. Now, here's an issue everybody has when they first start drawing stuff. They go like this, window.draw. BG, and that's all good and fine, but watch what happens to my program as long as the image opens up. The image might be a little too small. I could stretch it out if I wanted to, too, in paint. I think the image is probably going to be too small. Didn't draw it. Didn't draw it. Oh, I forgot to set the texture. BG dot set texture. BG texture. That's all good. Should draw my background. Yeah, go ahead, man. Okay, so yes. Do you see the problem here? Where's my ogre? Okay, so order matters when you draw it. You gotta draw the background first. Okay, like 
that. If you ever want to resize something, I think the best way to do it is in paint. So I'm just going to quickly open that background picture and uh, um, C++ animation. I'll just resize this to 800 by 600. Resize. You don't want to maintain the aspect ratio and under pixels you just write 800 by 600. You're good to go. It's perfect. Hit save. Now when I run my program it should be an ogre frolicking through the forest. Just like Shrek said. Just like Shrek, yep. You'll notice that I have a few, like a little issue with the white like armpits and stuff. I forgot to delete out, but see that? You even add music. Look at that. You could add music and make him smaller when he walks. You know, like make him. You do whatever you want. Like you have total control, right? So there you go. Cool. So that's the basics. Let me just stop that video and post it to YouTube.